We're going to replace the lug bolts on the wheel assembly here, on the rotor assembly here, because they're threaded and or sheared. And we need to get the brake caliper assembly off first, so we're going to remove two bolts to do that. It's not these two bolts on the outside edge. These two 17 millimeters are to get at the brake pads. We've got to take the actual caliper off, which means we've got to get at these 17 millimeter bolts more on the inside. And there's one here and there's one right below it. Now that these two 17 millimeter mounting bolts are off the back of the caliper assembly, we just have to grab it. It might be tight and you need to just pull it away this way off of your rotor. And then we're going to hang it up uh, using a bungee cord, just hang it off of the suspension coil. Keep it out of the way. Make sure you don't disconnect any brake lines. You're going to have to do a brake bleed afterwards. Next, we're going to pry this cap off gently using a couple of flathead screwdrivers. Just use one on either uh, side of it and just gently pry this off. Notice there's a O-ring right around the lip of this. So as you're prying it off, just be careful not to dig deep and damage that O-ring. And if it did get messed up, you'll have to replace that. Next, we're going to remove this cotter pin. So you're going to use some needle nose pliers and unbend both ends of it so it's straight and you just pull this out this way. Once the cotter pin is out, you'll be able to just pull off this adjusting cap. You just pull it straight out and then we're going to remove this nut right here. This is a one inch nut. I don't have a one inch socket, so I'm just gonna use an adjustable wrench on this. And now that that nut is off, all we have to do is just pull forward and right here, and the whole rotor is gonna come out. Uh, make sure you don't drop this piece right here. Just hold on to that. We need to remove these bolts. There's four of them, they're 14 millimeters, and they're pretty tight. And when this is out of the car, of course, and even on the car, uh, because it's rear-wheel drive and this is the front one, this is just going to spin. So what we did is I put uh, one ratchet right here, and I've got another one on the one adjacent to it, and I've got this sitting flat on the ground braced against this block here, so that as I pull on one here, and I would normally be pressing down on the whole thing to keep it from moving, the one ratchet will keep the whole thing from spinning. That ratchet trick will work on three of the four bolts, but then, of course, Three of them are loose now, so you can't use one to get the last bolt. So we're just going to stick a flathead screwdriver in the end there and use the screwdriver as a way to keep the entire mechanism from spinning as I apply torque. Once you get those four bolts off the other side, just put the rotor assembly down here. You're going to put a pry bar under here, and you're just going to hold the rotor down while you pry up, and you're going to be able to separate, and it might take a work but you're going to separate this piece off so that we can get these bolts all the way out. We've separated these two pieces now and you're just going to knock these out with a hammer and they'll just come right out and then we'll replace them with fresh ones. So now we're just going to take our new bolts and you can see that they have this knurling right here which this knurling matches up with the knurling on the inside of these grooves and we'll just set them in. You've got to make sure you tap them in enough that none of this knurled stuff shows uh, outside. This, should, this cap should be flush. So we're going to put those four in. We have the new wheel studs pounded in there. Use the mini sledge to do that. And then we're going to just take this piece and we're going to put it back on top and uh, re-secure it with these bolts. I'm going to clean up these bolts first and I'm going to paint them with anti-seize, including underneath the head here. And I'm going to very lightly touch this edge with anti-seize right here because that's where these two pieces had almost gotten fused together and I had to really work hard to get these apart earlier. These four bolts are back in, and everything's reassembled. We're just going to clean this up with some brake parts cleaner so that our discs are totally clean, and then we're going to put everything back on the car. When you're reassembling this, after you put the rotor assembly back on, you're going to put the outer wheel bearing in. It goes in this way, so the smaller side goes in first. And that's going to go in right here, and then we're going to add... This washer, which has a little notch on it, and there's a notch on the top of the shaft right here, so make sure you line these two things up right here. That'll go in, and then we will push all that in firmly, and we'll use this nut to secure everything in place. And once you have all that nut screwed down, that's going to be 25 foot-pounds, and we're going to insert this sleeve over the top, and then we'll put the, uh, the cotter pin back in, bend them back out, and this will all be secure. The cotter pin has been reinserted. We bent back out the ends of it to hold that cap in place. We just pop this back on and then uh, 
we are done. All right, just a couple good whacks with a rubber mallet. Get that back in place. And now we have brand new wheel studs.